Russian dictator Vladimir Putin is rushing to return the territory of the Kursk region to Russian control before the inauguration of the new US President Donald Trump on January the 20th, 2025. The Telegraph writes about this. It is noted that for this purpose, the Russian command deployed 50,000 troops, Russian and North Korean, in Kursk region. NATO allies believe Putin hopes to retake the territories seized by Ukraine before Trump's inauguration on January the 20th, the article says. Moscow is likely to increase the number of kamikaze drone attacks on Ukrainian positions in the coming days, according to British military intelligence seen by the Telegraph. The enemy may use new launch sites near the border. Some 12,000 North Korean troops that Kim Jong-un has sent to support Moscow's war efforts are also likely to be involved in the fighting in the Kursk region under a mutual military assistance pact between Russia and North Korea signed this year. Ukrainian analysts believe that the Kremlin may also seek to use its largest counter-offensive in the Kursk region to gain momentum and advance further into the Sumy region. The publication notes that Russia has already recaptured about half of the territory seized by Ukraine in its daring invasion of Kursk in August. Ukrainian Armed Forces Commander-in-Chief Oleksandr Syrsky said that Ukrainian positions were being attacked by tens of thousands of enemy soldiers from the best Russian strike units. Western diplomats are concerned that Putin will try to quickly seize territory before Trump's inauguration to give Russia more bargaining power in any peace talks. The Telegraph concludes, during the presidential election campaign, Trump said he would end the war in a day. Volodymyr Zelensky, the Ukrainian president, has cautiously welcomed Trump's election victory but called on him to maintain military support in the coming months. Their call after the result included Elon Musk, whose Starlink technology has been used by Ukrainian forces to direct drones towards Russian targets. Since the counter-offensive in Kursk, Russia has intensified frontline attacks, swarming Ukrainian oppositions with mass infantry assaults. Ukrainian forces are suffering from a shortage in manpower and weapon supplies. The Ukrainian military continues to eliminate Russian soldiers. The total number of losses of the Russian army since the beginning of the invasion is already 712,610 soldiers. According to the general staff, the defense forces destroyed 1,950 Russian invaders in a day, and the following equipment was destroyed, tanks 23 units, armored combat vehicles 81 units, artillery systems 38 units, UAVs of the operational tactical level 61 units, automotive equipment and tank trucks 68 units. As the general staff notes, 187 combat clashes were recorded during the past 24 hours. In the Kharkiv direction, Russian terrorists stormed the positions of Ukrainian units in the Vovchansk district eight times without success. The settlement of Kozacha Lopan was hit by an airstrike, on which the enemy dropped two guided bombs. In the Kupyan direction, there were three attacks by invaders during the day. The defense forces repelled enemy assaults near Kindrashivka, Novoplatonivka, and Kalisnikivka. Actively using aviation in the Kramatorsk direction, the occupiers attacked three times in the areas of Shesevoyar. They had no success. Over the past day, the occupiers stormed the positions of our defenders in the Toritsk and Sherbanivka areas four times in the Toritsk direction. In the Pokrovsky direction, our defenders stopped 50 offensive actions of the aggressor in Myro Lubivka, Promeny, Hryharivka, Krutoy Yar, Petrivka, Pustinka, Ukrainka, and Lasivka districts. The main efforts of enemy attacks were concentrated in the direction of Selidov and Promin settlements. In the Kurakiv direction, the defense forces repelled 57 attacks. The occupiers most actively tried to advance near Alinka, Novoselidivka, Vozdvazenka, Voznasenka, Novodmitrivka, Maximilianivka, Dalny, Antonivka, Katerinivka, Kremenea Baka, Santsivka, Zora, and Kurakovo. In the Vrmivsk direction, the enemy carried out 14 assaults on our positions in the districts of Trudovoy, Makarivka, Novodorivka, and Rivnopoli. Actively engaged bomber and assault aircraft for strikes on the direction.
Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov on Monday rejected a report by the Washington Post newspaper saying that Russia's president and U.S. president-elect Donald Trump had held a phone call last Thursday as completely untrue and pure fiction. Peskov told his daily conference call with reporters the report was just false information. Asked about whether the Kremlin is expecting an escalation of the conflict in Ukraine, Peskov said, nothing can't be ruled out given that European leaders continue to seek the strategic defeat of our country. He was speaking following reports that French President Emmanuel Macron and UK Prime Minister Keir Starmer are planning to try and convince Washington to allow strikes deep inside Russia with storm shadow missiles. The dynamics of the special military operation are well understood by the military. They understand well what is happening, and, perhaps, it is also important to note that no types of weapons are capable of changing this dynamic, he added. И, собственно, также на Валде я хочу вам напомнить, именно Путин сказал, что э, и Шольц, и Макрон, они сами ушли со связи и не хотят разговаривать. Поэтому здесь, э, ну, если они говорят, что какие-то сигналы пойдут, значит, их надо дождаться. Пока не было никаких. Мы видим, мы видим определенную нервозность, э, всяческие опасения европейцев. Э, в связи с избранием господина Трампа президентом США. Но как дальше будет выстраиваться линия с обеих сторон, мы будем наблюдать. Европейские руководители продолжают свою линию. И, собственно, они продолжают добиваться стратегического поражения нашей страны, Российской Федерации. Мы же, в свою очередь, продолжаем специальную военную операцию до достижения всех поставленных целей. Динамика в проведении специальной военной операции военным хорошо понятна. Они хорошо понимают, что происходит. Наверное, еще важно, важно отметить, что никакие отдельные виды вооружений изменить эту динамику уже не состоит. Iran's foreign ministry spokesman denied his country's involvement in an assassination plan targeting Donald Trump. The U.S. Justice Department on Friday disclosed an Iranian murder-for-hire plot to kill Trump, charging a man who said he had been tasked by a government official before this week's election with planning the assassination of the Republican president-elect. Investigators were told of the plan to kill Trump by Farhad Shakari, an accused Iranian government asset who spent time in American prisons for robbery and who authorities say maintains a network of criminal associates enlisted by Tehran for surveillance and murder-for-hire plots. We have openly rejected any involvement in such matters and consider the accusations completely baseless, said Esmail Baghiai during a regular briefing. Baghiai said the accusation was another mine planted under the already complex relations between Iran and the US. The region and the Muslim world and all countries are closely watching the current and next U.S. government's behavior and the international community wants an end to genocide, crimes and aggression in Palestine and Lebanon and escalation in West Asia, Shakari also said during the briefing.